Hello and welcome to today's NBA betting picks video presented by lineups.com. I am your host, Drew Norton. I'm here with Braxton Reynolds. Braxton, the people are asking for updates. They're asking for our count here. Uh, so I've been keeping a little sheet over the past week, basically. I've made seven official picks. I'm one, two, three, four four and three and I'm up 1.54 units so doing pretty well um, so far nothing too crazy we got off to a rough start with Duran that one game that he got three fouls in seven minutes and then Anthony Davis uh, we altered his assist kind of took a swing and a miss on that but everything else has been pretty solid but uh, yeah give us your uh, your pick today um, so I'm going soon to be a channel favorite. I got to say, I think he might be able to dethrone Bobby Portis. We'll see. Ooh. It's, it's tough. It's tough. I know. Right. Okay. Simone Fontecchio over one and a half threes at minus 148. And I'm also alting at three plus at plus 200. So he takes the seventh most corner three point attempts per game where he's making like 41% of those. He's a very good shooter. He faces a New York squad that gives up the seventh most corner attempts per game themselves. And, you know, he's played 13 games this year against teams in the top 10 for most corner attempts allowed. And he also saw 20 minutes per game. In those 13, he hit two plus in 10, which is 77% hit rate. He hit three plus in six, which is a 46% hit rate. So getting two to one on the 46% is great. Same with the 77%. I mean, that's just, it's destroying the implied probability that we need based on, you know, the line and the odds. So I really like that. And, you know, those 13 games, that included a three for 10 performance against New York. I mean, 10 threes against New York. He's a near 40% shooter. And, you know, I think... I think based on his volume and that trend, he gets around six to seven attempts per game. Very reasonable. And, you know, he's if he's 40%, he should definitely hit two there. Yeah, no, I think that's that's spectacular. I think Fontecchio, you're getting really good value right now on him because I think the sports books are still trying to figure out, like, you know, all right, how much is he going to shoot and how much is he going to play? He's been starting for them. He's been getting some good volume, especially from deep. And I think it makes sense with this Utah team. Um, that's kind of something that they need to help continue to kind of spread the floor a little bit. And I think it definitely makes sense for sure. All right. My pick today, I'm going with Tyrese Halliburton, 12 plus assists, minus 105 on DraftKings. Um, see if you can't um, get that into plus money somewhere. Um, FanDuel or someplace like that. But I really like this here. We've kind of talked about this extensively throughout the season, but Boston has allowed a ton of wide open threes, which is six, six plus feet uh, from an open shooter. And for the most part, they really have gotten lucky with how opponents have shot it against them. I'm sure some of that has to do with the fact that, you know, on the other end of the floor, teams are chasing around these these Boston players that are just kind of living around the perimeter, moving, cutting. Um, you know, they have a really fluid offense in that way. But they are allowing the third most wide open threes to opponents. And, you know, some of that, like I said, feels probably like because Boston can just outshoot teams. But Indiana might not be the best team to kind of test that theory on if you're the Celtics, especially with Halley's vision, their pace. Um, his passing IQ, he's going to pass guys wide open all day long. He's going to see things before they're there. And that's it, just what we've seen all season long. And I think he's going to log some, you know, a, a lot of assists just in transition and in, you know, passing to guys, just one pass and then three point attempt, um, you know, based on how Boston has been playing defense Pacers are hitting about 38% of their attempts this season as a team that ranks seventh in the league. So that fares really well for us in this spot. In the past 12 games, Halley's averaged 14 assists per game. He's eclipsed that line eight times. That's 67% hit rate. 
Um, you know, I, I really think Indy, if they do get relegated at times into the half court, I do think that they really are going to try to utilize the, uh, you know, high pick and roll to get Hallie off that screen, to get him, you know, uh, any kinds of switches that he can get to get off of a Drew Holiday or a Derek White. They're going to try to force Porzingis out of the paint. Um, if he doesn't come up, I think you got the pick and pop with Turner and you got a bunch of other guys who are just willing, who are just ready, ready and willing for the catch and shoot and the corners on the wings, guys bubbling up. Um, I just think it's a really good spot for Halley to get 12 plus assists. Obviously the big concern here is, is he a hundred percent healthy and how is it going to be with him meshing with Siakam as far as, you know, his play style, how is that going to work? Uh, those are our only concerns, but with the implied probability here and, you know, everything as far as the matchup and the stats based, it, it, it checks out. Yeah. You know, Boston's guards too, they're big, and they apply a lot of on-ball pressure. You know, I think it's going to be hard for Halley to kind of get his shot off. So he does get a more pass-oriented game plan to me. If Boston uses their zone too, Halley's just going to carve that up. So if they ever try to implement that, I don't think it will work. For his health, you know, that really affects shooting rust. It doesn't really affect court vision, passing. But I will say I'm slightly worried about a minutes restriction. I'm not sure if Indiana has come out with that, but um, that could be a worry too. Yeah, that I think that uh, is definitely a concern. So I would say play this once you kind of get a little bit more clarity on that. Um, if that clarity doesn't come, it definitely is a risk. But if they say, all right, he's, you know, full blown, ready to go, going to play 36, 38 minutes, definitely give this a play. All right, that's going to wrap it up for us. Those are our picks today. Slate's not great today, guys, so we just have two picks. Um, we do have some matchup previews on the site where we've done uh, write-ups and given our spread picks, money line picks, all those sorts of things. So feel free to head to the site to check those out because we got more plays there. But as far as player props, this is what's stuck out to us. Everything else we don't think has a lot of great value right now. Uh, as always, if you like the video, go ahead and like, comment on the video below. We've been commenting more to try to engage with y'all. If you have any questions about different props, we'll give our opinions on them. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to us, and we will see you tomorrow.